very good evening to you. Welcome to another Newsmaker Live broadcast right here on DBS Television with me, Timothy Polia. Well, between now and 10 o'clock, we'll be discussing some political developments in St. Lucia. Um, over the last uh, few weeks, we've been having uh, a lot of press conferences by the opposition St. Lucia Labour Party. And also, they've been making a lot of appearances on the Allen's talk show. So this evening, we have yet another official from the opposition SLP making an appearance on Newsmaker Live because the road to the Prime Minister's residence passes through here, <laughs> just across there. We'll be going up until 10 o'clock. We conclude with the clip that peaked. And my guest this evening is the MP for V4 North. He's also the SLP chairman. He's also the SLP spokesperson or spokesman on health, fisheries, agriculture, and also food production. Mr. Moses Jabatis, welcome to the program, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, good evening to you, team. I'm very happy to be here on this program. Let me also say good evening to the, 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 the people who are, who are watching and listening um, from all, all around the world. And also a very special good evening to my constituents in View Fort North, Grace, you know, Bellevue, Savans, Vigie, Piru, Upico, everywhere. I'm happy to be here. Why the endless media appearances by the SLP over the last few weeks? I think it is very important for a political party, a mature and responsible political party, to engage the public. And engaging the pu public requires us to engage them at all levels, whether it be in the radio, television, um, the internet. And we are making a very special effort to ensure that our message goes out there, to ensure that we connect with, with listeners, people who are viewing the, the television programs and to ensure that we continue a con the, the conversation with the people. So it's very important for us to, to continue that conversation and, and we have um, taken a deliberate decision to ensure that whatever messages we have, um, everybody has those messages. Do you think it's a situation where the SLP smells blood? There's blood in the water, and you know what happens when, it, uh, when whenever we have a situation of that nature. The sharks will come. No, the St. Lucia Labour Party from, from inception, from the 1950s, has always focused on education. The St. Lucia Labour Party has always focused on mobilization on the ground. Um, you can go way back into the 1960s, the 1950s, the days of George Charles and so on, when workers were in difficulties. The St. Lucia Labour Party has a history of, of communicating with people throughout its, its time, whether it's in opposition or in government and so on. So this is not strange. However, um, the, the situation in the con in the country today obviously requires the St. Lucia Labour Party to to step up its its communication processes its its techniques and also to engage people even more because of what is happening in the country today and w or what is that situation making reference to that would include no doubt um, the situation involving the St. Jude Hospital well certainly I think it is very clear that every single day different representatives from from different sectors of St. Lucian society are coming out and indicating clearly that what is happening in St. Lucia the governance of St. Lucia is, is clearly not going down the road that that many people expected um, come 7th of June 2000, when the 7th of June 2016 um, dawned, I think, I think many people thought that the promises made by the Alan Chastney United Workers Party government um, would bring, you know, um, bread in the po in, in, on the table, ching ching in the pocket, and that St. Lucia um, was promised better governance, St. Lucia was promised um, so many things. And today, I believe St. Lucians generally um, agree that what is happening in St. Lucia in terms of the way we believe the government is causing this country to bleed, what we believe is really a deliberate attack on the institutions of St. Lucia, it is very clear that, that things in St. Lucia are not going the way many St. Lucians thought they would be going at this Well, one time. doesn't expect you to say otherwise. After all, you're the chairman of the St. Lucia Labour Party. You want to unseat this, this government and therefore you cannot claim to be a credible spokesman for the masses, for the people of St. Lucia. You might be a credible spokesman for the St. Lucia Labour Party. Well, credibility is based on, on facts. 
credibility is based on on research and credibility is based on evidence and the evidence is very clear the the government in our view has attacked the Simisha national trust by removing the subvention that is a fact the government in our view um, has attacked the, the 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 health system of the country by by discontinuing work at the St. Jude Hospital re Rehabilitation Project. That is a fact. The government is in the process of privatizing the Owen King E Hospital. That's a fact. The government um, clearly is, has, has dismantled many of the programs that, that, that were designed to bring benefits to a number of St. Lucians who are on the margins. Again, that is a fact. So credibility has a lot to do with, with whether you, you, you can cite evidence and whether you can cite fact. There is a lot of evidence in St. Lucia today that this government is dismantling the society bit by bit, every week, every day. And um, it's not only the St. Lucia Labour but, Party. But it, what do you consider to be dismantling? Don't you think it's a case of the government undertaking various initiatives that do not sit well with the St. Lucia Labour Party? Because maybe some people want the status quo to be maintained. You expect that any government coming into office will come up with its new plans, its new initiatives, and they would invariably um, not meet the approval of the party which was just in power a little over two years ago. Well, certainly um, it is not only the St. Lucia Labour Party. I mean, when you think about Dr. Ulrich Mondesi resigning from the board of the St. Jude Hospital, Dr. Ulrich Mondesi ran as a candidate for the United Workers Party. This is not St. Lucia Labour Party. This is um, but, what, what does a, but what does a resignation signal? He, he resigned, yes. He, he's never said why he resigned. But are, it's, you, it's are you reading something in his resignation which is not there? Something that he has not um, spelt out? Again, evidence and fact. It is fact. Yeah, what is the evidence? It is fact that mm -hmm. Dr. Rick Mondesi was displeased with the way in which the, the, the government handled the St. Jude Hospital Rehabilitation Yeah, matter. but he said that? He spoke about it? There is evidence that... No, what is the evidence that he spoke the about? The evidence it? that Dr... Ulrich Mondesi mm -hmm. is is dissatisfied. Is is in the media. He did say that he's, he's, he does not approve of the way in which the government is handling the St. Jude Rehabilitation Project. Mm -hmm. And there are others. There are many other people who have come out who are not St. Lucia Labour Party members, who are not St. Lucia Labour Party people, who are expressing concern about the way in which the, the, the government is, is running the affairs of, of the country. As far as Dr. Um, Mondesi is concerned, I'm aware that he resigned. I'm not aware that he made any pronouncement um, indicating why he tendered his resignation. Dr. Ulrich Mondesi is one of many individuals... But I'm saying to you that I don't know that he ever said why he resigned from his post. I, I, I said that Dr. Ulrich Mondesi... There is evidence that Dr. Ulrich Mondesi had difficulty with the way the government handled the St. Jude Rehabilitation Project. So what is the evidence? What I don't understand why you're asking me that. Yeah, yeah, but you say there's evidence was a source of the evidence because he has never spoken on this particular issue at least publicly we have not heard from him on that matter I as will to say why he resigned i will say once again that mm -hmm. dr Ulrich mondesi has expressed concerns about the way in which the government has handled the St. Where, where, project. where he did that i will say again mm -hmm. uh -huh. timothy mm -hmm. that dr Ulrich mondesi okay. has said many times that the way in which the the government has handled the St. Jude rehabilitation project is wrong and that he would not remain as chairman of the St. of the St. Jude Hospital Board. And it's a fact that we have not heard from Dr. Ulrich Mondesi as far as this issue is concerned. What is very clear is that he resigned um, from the board. But isn't it strange that, that just a few months after um, a candidate of the United Workers Party who ran for the United Workers Party in an election, a medical doctor who was very vocal about the St. Jude Hospital Reconstruction Project and the way it was happening, he became the chairman of the board and a few months after, among all of the debacle that he resigned. Isn't that very strange? But we can move on. No, but the fact remains that we can read a lot into it. But I don't think specifically we could say it's for that reason or for any particular reason because he has not made this um, clear. And people really cannot cite anywhere that he made any clear pronouncement as to why he resigned from the position. But the St. Lucia Labour Party at this time, by criticizing the government and taking it to task on a number of issues, I think is indirectly saying that it is ready to take over the reins of governance in St. Lucia, is that what he's saying? The St. Lucia Labour Party continues to prepare every single day to give St. Lucia better governance than the United Workers Party. The fact that we lost elections does not 
mean that we we you know we are buried it does not mean that that we have lost the right to reorganize and to and to reorganize our party we have a new leader in the person of honorable philip jpa the parliamentary representative for castries east and every single day the central labor party continues to refine its processes the central labor party continues to to reorganize so that when the opportunity comes that the Senusha Labour Party will present itself to the people of Saint Lucia in order that in order for us to, to give better governance um, to this country. What what would cause you to say to give it to give better governance to the people of this country? Do you think that um, the Senusha Labour Party failed the people the last time around? The Senusha Labour Party clearly was was, was um, rejected at the polls, and when a government is rejected at the polls, it is very clear that. The people who went to the polls on that day, June 6, 2016, felt that the St. Lucia Labour Party was not the right government for them in, for, for the immediate future. All right? And the reasons for that, there are many reasons for that. We can talk about campaigning, we can talk about the, what people thought was our performance and so on. We can talk about all of that. But the St. Lucia Labour Party continues to, to believe that, that its style of governance, the, the kind of governance that it presented to the people of St. Lucia and, and our processes um, were much better than what obtains today. And so while we lost the general election, we continue to have faith and to believe that we provided better governance for the people of St. Lucia than what obtains today. But have you really done an, any kind of assessment so that you will get um, a, a feedback that is unvarnished, something that um, is certainly um, not biased, um, uh, an assessment that certainly will be very straightforward as far as the performance of the previous administration? And well, well, yes, we continue to, um, since June 6, 2016, the St. Lucia Labour Party um, has done a number of assessments. We continue to do so today because the political party obviously operates at, at different, um, in different environments with different constituencies. And therefore, the St. Lucia Labour Party continues even today to assess the, the results of the elections, to, to go into communities and, and, and talk with its supporters, talk with people generally to find out, um, to continue to find out what, how people feel. And um, the performance of, of the current United Lucas Party government, um, notwithstanding the way they're performing, we continue to, to go back to reorganize our constituency groups, speak with people, find out what got people upset, and so on. So it's a, it's a process that continues even today. Do you think it's a tough sell in terms of how the Senator Labour Party or even the United Workers Party would present itself come the next joint election? Because it seemed to be the, the Senator electorate seemed to be in a, in, a, in a bind, in a dilemma as to whether to repose its confidence in the Senator Labour Party long term or the United Workers Party. How do you convince the voters of Senator just a few years after you booted out of office that you're the right party? For well, I'll put it this way to you, Tim. In 2011, the, in 2006, 2006, the United Workers' Party won the elections. By 2011, St. Lucians returned the St. Lucia Labour Party. In 2016, the St. Lucians decided to return the United Workers' Party. We are not here to question the voters in terms of what the voters want to do and so on. Our, our job and our duty is to prepare ourselves. If the voters rejected us, okay, for one period of time, we have to go back to the drawing board and to design our processes in, in, in such a way that would attract the voters the next time around. And w what we are saying here is that what, what is happening in St. Lucia today has caused not only the St. Lucia Labour Party, but individuals who are not members of the St. Lucia Labour Party to reflect on the performance of the United Workers Party. Okay? Even at this time, over two years in, in, in government, and the things that are happening are causing many people in society, not just the St. Lucia Labour Party, to reflect on, on the performance of the United Workers Party. And so our job is to ensure that we, we retool ourselves, we reorganize ourselves, so that the next time around, we are going to present better options for the voters of St. Lucia. We, I'm not in the business of worrying about what the voters did. I'm in the business of preparing ourselves, reflecting on what we did before, reflecting 
on, on our own business and reorganizing ourselves, mobilizing people, all right, making the St. Lucia Labour Party even more attractive so that young people, maturing people, can come to our fold to ensure that we win the next general elections. Do you think what is happening is analogous to a man having relations with one female, then leaving this female, going to another female, and then repeating this action all over again. Is that what the people of St. Lucia are experiencing? Because you said in 2006, the United Workers Party won. Come 2011, it was back to the St. Lucia Labour Party. 2016, back to the United Workers Party. That is the dilemma that the people of St. Lucia are experiencing, are, are finding themselves in right now. It appears there isn't much of a vast difference between the SLP and the UWP in terms of how they're handling the affairs of the state, and they are always um, causing the electorate to be so frustrated as to say, let me go for the less of the two evils. No, in fact, I disagree totally. In fact, I give the electorate a lot of credit because what politicians must understand now is that you may not you th there's this thing of coming into politics and believe that you, maybe you've been in in office for three terms and four terms and so on i give the electorate credit because politicians now realize that you can be a one-term government and your performance and or the perception of your performance can be impacted even in a five-year term we were in office for four and a half years and we lost the elections in 2006, the United Workers Party won. They, they lost by 2011. And therefore, I think we, we are beginning to see a, a, a maturing electorate, in my view. We may disagree. I may disagree as a politician um, on certain decisions. I, 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 I thought we should have won the elections, but I don't blame the electorate. What we have to realize is this. To, Today's politician has to work constantly to ensure that you keep the, the, the confidence of the electorate. Of course, there are other factors, the Cambridge Analytica, the, the social media, and all of those campaigns, and, and working on people's minds and emotions and so on. That is something that has to be dealt with, all right? And all around the Caribbean, that is a factor, a new factor that has come in. But generally, the changing of governments, I don't see it as a dilemma. I believe it is the, 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 the political parties, that have to do the work to ensure that we remain in office or we do the work to ensure that we get back to office because we believe that we are a better party but we have to do the work to ensure that we convince people that but in the process don't you think you're seeing a lot of division and confusion in the country um because no sooner you are mo removed from office you believe it's your right to return and then you start to sow the seeds of chaos and almost trying to disrupt um, the, you know the development of the country and the same would happen with um, a government the government would do whatever it takes to remain in office so if you believe it's your right to always get out of office and then to return and then the, the right of the party in office to stay don't you think that's where the confusion is well i don't think uh, we are sowing any seeds of chaos let me tell you what sowing the seeds of chaos really is when a government comes in office and it it gives away or leases or rents almost the whole of you fought to one individual, including the National Stadium and including the Sandy Beach, which we, which we have said over our dead bodies, um, that is actually sowing the seeds of chaos. When a government comes and decides that a hospital which was donated to the people of St. Lucia by the European Union, that they're going to privatize that hospital, that is sowing the seeds of chaos. Well, the government has not said that it will privatize the hospital. The government has spoken about a PPP arrangement. No, well... But you have said... No, well, the, the SLP keeps saying privatize, privatize, when the government is saying um, PPP, the public, government, private participation. Well, the government has said many things at many different times. They have said privatize, they, they've said PPP, that this government has not made up its mind as in terms of what is going to what truth is going to tell the people of St. Lucia because they believe that truth is what you believe it to be. But I'm say I'm saying to you, the seeds of chaos were not sown by us. We lost the elections and we were busy going about our business. Dr. Kenny Anthony resigned. We were busy going about our business, reorganizing our party. But it is this United Workers Party government that has sown the seeds of chaos in St. Lucia in every sector, in for every issue. They are the ones, and as a responsible opposition, we have our constituents to represent, 
and people who voted for the St. Lucia Labour Party and St. Lucians General, we have a responsibility to ensure that what we believe are really the seeds of chaos that we stand up to those actions and those, those policies of the government. We are democracy. We are democracy. Just a few months after the United Workers' Party lost the elections in, in 2011, just a few months in the parliament, the records are there, parliamentary representatives from the United Workers' Party were already you know, raising issues about their roads and about just a few months. So we are in a, de we are in a democracy. And if we believe that the, the United Workers' Party is destroying institutions in this country, we have a responsibility to stand up and to protest and to ensure that the United Workers' Party does not take the country down that road. Why wasn't the, and we've been down that road before, but why wasn't the St. Lucia Labour Party in a position um, to deliver on the several promises made under the St. Jude Hospital project? When the then Health Minister, Ms. Alvina Reynolds, mentioned on at least two or three occasions that the hospital will be delivered to the people of the South, and she failed miserably. The, the, St. the St. Lucia Labour Party has explained many times why the hospital was not completed by June 2016. But I, in summary, I will say again, the St. Lucia Labour Party came into office um, to find a St. Jude Hospital reconstruction project ongoing. The government of the United Workers' Party under, Stephen, under Honorable Stevenson King, he was the, the Prime Minister, changed the scope of the, of, of the, of the reconstruction project many months before the general elections. All right. There was no financing which was sought by the government of the United Workers' Party to complete the St. Jude Hospital. The St. Lucia Labour Party under Dr. Kennedy Anthony sought financing which was not there to complete the St. Jude Hospital project. The financing and the processes, the financing was sought from the Taiwanese through a loan. And the processes caused the financing to be in St. Lucia for use by 2015. Work was accelerated, and by 2016, when elections came, the hospital was not completed, but works were ongoing. The St. Lucia Labour Party never stopped work on the hospital. All right, so so that is these are the facts, and we have said it over and over again. But the fact is, Mr. Jabatiste, the St. Lucia Labour Party government keep, kept promising the people that they would deliver on that promise and uh, deliver sorry the health institution and it failed the St. Lucia Labour Party promised to deliver the health institution mm -hmm. and the St. Lucia Labour Party continued to work to deliver the St. Jude Hospital to the people we did not complete the hospital by by the elections of 2016 but the St. Lucia Labour Party continued work on the hospital after seeking financing that the United Workers Party did not leave all right. But Th if you know all that, why would you still say that we will deliver on that promise? We will deliver the hospital to the people of the South. And what, what really gives you the authority right now, um, you, coming across as a paragon of virtue, to attack the government which has been in office just a little over two years and has not been able to deliver on um, the, the, the project? Well, we are not paragons of vir virtue, Tim, and we don't try to come across as that. We, we simply talk about facts, evidence, and the attitude of the government. Yeah, but you have ignored one fact, and mm. that is the, the, the previous health minister promised to deliver I have admitted, and failed. No, we have admitted that we did not complete the hospital. What else do you want me to say? We have co admitted many times, and the evidence is there that we did not complete the hospital project. The facts are that we sought financing. We worked on the hospital project every single day until June 6, 2016. So we promised the people we were going to complete the hospital. By June of 2016, the St. Jude Hospital was not completed. However, the government of the St. Lucia Labour Party continued work on the St. Jude Hospital. What we are not saying here yet is that the United Workers' Party government won the elections on the promise that the Senator Labour Party was not finishing the hospitals, they're going to come to finish it. It's over two years now, and they stopped but if work it took, on the hospital. If it took the Senator Labour Party five years <coughs> on that project and it failed to deliver, why not, in fairness, give the United Workers Party the same amount of time, a period, are you serious, to complete team? the project? Are you serious? I'm just being logical. No, no, no. I'm just saying if it took five no, years, can't be serious it, about it, took, it took the opposition. The opposition promised. 
five years could not deliver why after two years why limit it to two years and say it's two years then you should have delivered on that project already okay let me answer we can say this because when the St. Lucia Labour Party left office, we left financing, we sought financing, and we left financing to complete the St. Jude Hospital re reconstruction project. As with many other projects in St. Lucia, the, St. the United Workers Party government stopped the rehabilitation of the St. Jude, um, um, pro the, the, the rehabilitation of the St. Jude Hospital in the South. They stopped it. They stopped it. This is not about let's give this one five years and give this one two years if we if we go in through this argument i can now say that under honorable stevens and king they started they had two they, 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 the 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 fire was in 2009 and that's why i don't want to go in this argument give him this time and give him that let us well let's go back to 2009 then because the fire was in 2009 september 9th 2009 so let's start from there the united workers party was in office the election was November of 2011. So what happened between... So we're forgetting that part, that United Workers Party was in office in 2009 to 2011. The election was in November of 2011. So what, what about those years? So we forget that. Okay, so, so the United Workers Party of that era failed the people on the St. Jude Hospital project. And likewise, the St. Lucia Labour Party of 2011 and 2016... Um, and now that 2016 into 2018, this government has also failed. So this is a case where the people are watching and saying that the politicians have failed us. It is bo a, from both sides. They no, have failed us. Well, well, I believe that judgment to the people. I will go on the facts and the evidence. When we left office in 2016, team, there was financing. The United Workers Party came in and they stopped the St. Jude Hospital Rehabilitation Project. That is a, the fact. They stopped it up to now. And the United Workers Party has given all kinds of, of stories about what will happen to the St. Jude Hospital. All of this time, all of this time, you, you know what's happening at the stadium and all of the, all, what the St. Lucia Labour Party is saying. You are the government of the day. The conditions to complete the St. Jude Rehabilitation Project were left in a state when we left office for you to continue the project. Okay, you stopped the project, you gave all kinds of reasons, it's over two years now. And as a responsible opposition, we have to raise our voices because we represent constituents. We cannot continue to say, this one was there for four <coughs> years, but this one failed. But Mr. Jabatis, I never heard you say anything whilst you were in government and you were the MP for, for View for South. I mean, between 2011 and 2016, you said absolutely nothing as far as the St. Jude Hospital project is concerned. Okay, let me tell you what happened, what I did in between 2011 and 2016. Between 2011 and 2016, I was part of a cabinet with Dr. Kennedy Anthony as the Prime Minister, and I sat in the cabinet with Sister Alvina Reynolds, who was then Minister for Health, and as a cabinet, we worked tirelessly to ensure that we sought financing which the Udo, U, United Workers Party did not leave to finish the St. Jude Hospital project. As a member of the cabinet, we worked tirelessly to ensure that work never stopped at the St. Jude Hospital reconstruction project. As a member of the cabinet, between that time, we worked every single day to ensure that we completed the hospital. We did not complete it. So when you say you didn't hear me say anything, I can tell you what I was doing as a member of the cabinet. When we left office, the St. Jude Hospital reconstruction project was at a stage where there was financing and it could have been completed. The difference is this government came and they stopped it. So this is what I did as a member of the cabinet between 2011 and 2016 to ensure that the hospital where the people of Viewfort North, if something happens to them, myself included, that is the first place obviously we will go to, that this, was, this project um, got the support it was not completed and and we can say that over and over it's a fact it was not completed but what we have today is a government that the people put in office and it's not like they they, they continue to work on it and they change the scope they stopped it they stopped it and therefore on september 9th of this year which is the anniversary of the st Jude hospital fire that is one of the reasons we are we are going we are calling people out to make a statement against the attitude of the government where the St. Jude Hospital reconstruction 
project where is, is where where the issues surrounding the St. Jude Re Hospital reconstruction project are concerned. So you say you're going to be marching on September the 9th, giving the the indication to the St. Lucian public, giving the indication to the world that you did every you did everything that was humanly possible to ensure that the hospital was completed and you were unsuccessful as far as that issue is concerned. We are having a march and a protest rally because we believe that the United Workers Party cabinet, the Prime Minister and the, Uni and the United Workers pa ca Party cabinet is callous, vindictive in relation to that, that particular project and there are others. We believe that the, that the government has intentions to privatize the St. Jude Hospital and the UN King EU Hospital. We believe that the government is not telling us the truth about their intentions where healthcare is concerned and therefore we believe that is one of the of the many reasons okay that that is causing people to be upset and that is causing people to feel that they need to demonstrate their frustration with what the government is doing in relation to the St. Jude Hospital rehabilitation project should you have a placard saying we should have done better on your behalf when we were in office between 2011 and 2016? My placard will say we did not complete it, but we worked every single day, including getting the financing to complete it. And the United Workers Party came and they stopped it. And they, they, they are telling us things that, that, that equate to, 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 to almost derogatory language in relation to their responses to our concerns about the St. Jude Hospital Rehabilitation Project. The discussion will continue in just a moment. You're watching Newsmaker Live right here on DBS Television. My guest once again is the MP for V4 North. He's also the chairman of the opposition SLP, the SLP spokesman on health, fisheries, agriculture, and food production. Stay with us. Oh. Thank you so much for staying with us. You're watching Newsmaker Live right here on DBS Television. My name is Timothy Polio. We'll be together until 10 o'clock. We have at least 55 minutes left on the program. We conclude, as usual, with the clip that peaked. And my guest this evening is Mr. Moses Jabatiste. Uh, you could also, apart from your television screen, get us on Facebook, Newsmaker Live on Facebook, dbstvcenrisha.com, and click onto our live stream as we continue to broadcast the program. And, of course, at about 9.30, we'll be taking your calls. Um, as far as your constituency is um, concerned, what are some of the um, issues that are confronting constituents? Well, first of all, I, I must say how, how thankful I am for the people of Fort North for electing me to parliament for a third term. The first time, 2006 to 2011, we were in opposition, and um, 2011 to, to 2016, four and a half years in government, and now in opposition. So I have been a member of parliament, but in the government for four and a half years. The people of Hufort North are hardworking people, people who, you know, are cultural, sporting, and, and so on. And, and, and we have fishers, farmers. And what I tried to do as a parliamentary representative is to, I tried my best to ensure that the infrastructure that, that actually benefited the or benefits the the farmers and the fishers and so on that those that that the infrastructure for sports and and so forth was was improved i know that the people of view fort north in particular are very concerned about the the, the continued um dilapidated status of of our roads we will recall that in 2015, we started a road re rehabilitation project, one of them being the Bellevue to the to Opicon, or Opicon to Bellevue road, road project, which would have been done in two phases. The first phase of the road from Opicon up to the up to Zabo, and then the road would continue to to Bellevue. Unfortunately, we lost the elections, and that is another thing that 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 happens. We lost the election, and that road was never continued, and so the. The, the, the people who traverse the road from Zabo to Bellevue have tremendous difficulty with, with, with that road. I mean, we, 
I've written to the ministry and so on, and I communicate with officials from the ministry almost on a weekly basis, and that is that is that that is difficult. We also know that the the the, the people who are who are into sports, the young people, um, there are some projects that that we started, and because we lost the election, the general elections, those projects were were, were discontinued. I think though that the people of Viewfort North. Uh, are resilient people and we have had many successes coming out of the constituency even though we have seen a number of our projects stopped or discontinued we have seen many successes the the people continue to organize themselves and i've i've been a parliamentary representative who continues to believe that community organization at the grassroots level is the way to go to to to, to be resilient and save you from instances where, where central government does not provide enough of what you need to provide. So I believe our constituency um, is going through a difficult time, especially with our roads, especially the bus drivers who, who are paying 150, and not only bus drivers, but drivers. Are you saying that the road started to deteriorate over the last, what, two years? No, I did explain. Because, you see, the interesting thing I find about politicians is that whenever they lose a general election, they will tell you that, well, we are about to embark on this particular initiative, but we just lost the general election. If this United Lucas Party loses the next general election, it might it will say the same thing. Why not concentrate on those important issues impacting your constituents, impacting the, the people? Give it your best instead of always saying, and not you spe specifically, but politicians in general saying, Oh, I was just about to embark upon this initiative and we lost the general election. Are you all miscalculating along the way? No, but you see Again, I'm going back to, you, you asked me about my constituency, and I'm very happy about that. And I'm just giving you the facts of what, what has happened. The thing is, I'm not talking about something that I wanted to do. I'm talking about something that was done and was started. I'm not talking about a road that, that was just designed, you know. I'm talking about the Opico to Bellevue Road, the VG, those roads. I mean, the VG Road had not started, but all of the work in terms of the designs, this, these are projects that had started. This, these are not things that we're saying that we should have done. The Q80 Fund, for example, would have built the, 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 the farm roads in the, in the second phase of the farm rehabilitation project. The road to Miss Edwanis and the road to VG and all of those roads, the Bamboo Road and all of those roads were already designed in the ministry and so on. This government came in and they wrote to me asking me again to send a list of rules. I simply referred them. So I'm not talking about things that I'm saying we should have done. I'm talking about actual things that started. Now you can tell me, well, they, they sh you should have done them in the four and a half years. And I will retort quickly and say to you, Sir John Compton died. And they were still, they're still building rules in Miku today. So this argument of about politicians should not talk about what they should have done. I think, I think we, we, we have to go up based on facts. The evidence is, you probably ask me, where is the evidence that you had done this road? And the evidence is there. If you go from Opico, you'll see that road is paved. All right? By the time of the general elections, the second portion of the road was not done. So this is a fact. This is not something, um, I mean, the, 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 the water pipes in, in, in Fokapesh, for example, it's not a dream. The pipes are there. But it general elections came, and up to now there's no water in the pipe. So there are processes that take time, and things that, that start, that begin, that you, you don't finish in your term of office. And when the next government comes and it does not continue, people might say, why didn't you finish it? But I can give you several examples of projects that governments could not finish in a four-year cycle. But it's the responsibility of the government. If a project which would benefit the people of Bellevue, that road, for example, then why would the government not continue it? Because possibly um, this government, th that the people of Viewfort North did not vote for the United Workers Party. And the same government finds $13 million to build a road for T.O. Aking in the horse race, around the horse race track to divert a road. $13 million. So these are not wishful things. These are facts. And while we can, politicians can disagree on certain things, when, when the thing is evidence, when people are suffering because of a deliberate action of a government, I think it's important for us to lay the facts out and then debate the facts. It is not wishful thinking. These projects are there on the ground. Do you think that politicians generally have a tendency to take the voters for granted, particularly in so-called safe seats? And your seat is perceived, or it's, it, it is a safe seat, has voted the, um, in favor of the Senate Labour Party over several decades now. Um, how are you ensuring 
that you reward the people for the constant support that they have given to you and to previous MPs in VFONO? Well, first of all, I don't believe in the concept of safe seats. And you can ask my colleagues, you can ask um, Dr. Anthony, um, Honorable Philip J.P., our esteemed leader, and my other colleagues. I have always advocated that there's no safe seat. The people of Viewfort North continue to vote for the St. Lucia Labour Party, not because Viewfort North is a safe seat. It is because of the work that has been put by those people who support labor in Viewfort North and the way those people um, perceive the, the United Workers' Party and the way they perceive the St. Lucia Labour Party. The benefits that the St. Lucia Labour Party has brought to the people of Viewfort North, not just now, but there's a whole history. The people of Viewfort North remember the days when the United Workers' Party would plant tele um, electricity poles or put them around just before elections. And when they lose the elections in Viewfort North, carry all the polls away. The people of Viewfort North recall that it is only when the St. Lucia Labour Party came into office that there was water at Tevan and a road was built to, to Asukaye. And the people of Bellevue remember the processes that the St. Lucia Labour Party went through to bring basic am amenities like electricity. Some the things that people take for granted. The people of Viewfort North also recall that the St. Lucia Labour Party built the Pyroplane Field the Moncayen playing field, and more recently, the St. Lucia Labour Party purchased the land where the Bellevue playing field is with the process of, of building facilities there. That land was privately owned. The, St. Lucia, the people of Viefort North recall the school, the Bellevue school built on, on lands um, belonging to the Lees. The people of Viefort North recall the roads that were built passing all through Fonjoye and, and going at the back by Mr. Downey to Oji. So both in terms of infrastructure and in terms of, of development of the community, the people of Viewfort North know all of those people who got scholarships to go to Cuba, who are doctors and engineers and so on. They remember more recently the elderly care program. They remember the NICE program. They remember programs of rural electrification. So, so the people of Viewfort North have benefited. There are some challenges. The roads um, recently that have not been completed is a major challenge. And there are other challenges. There are facilities that we need to do and so on. But that is, that is not to say that the, that the St. Lucia Labour Party has not delivered things and projects to the people of Viewfort North. The roads are deplorable, I must admit. They are deplorable. And we started the, 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 the road projects. And right now, I personally believe that the people are being punished. I personally believe that the people have been punished. Why would you punish the people because the project was started by Moses Jabatis and the St. Lucia Labour Party? Why? These are the same people who are paying a dollar fifty cents in gas taxes. And this is another So you believe you believe issues. every time a project is stopped when they have a new administration is because the people are being punished by the government of the day? I'm not talking about my beliefs, I'm talking about the the, the, the view for North situation and the roads mm -hmm. that were started and it is attitudes like that that will cause people to come out on september 9th for the protest um march and rally because the government has decided for example in viewfort south they stopped the administrative center and they they, they, they felt that they, they 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 felt that they they had to stop it a project a project that would benefit people instead of coming to castries for all of those papers and so on they stopped that and there are several other things what is happening to the to the water project which we got a loan for okay which would which which would serve bellevue and grace and view for town and library and so on what is happening to that why why not give the government the benefit of the doubt and say that the government has its own plans its own objectives going forward and it has earned the right to implement those changes along the way because those would have been initiatives that were undertaken by a previous administration. Let's take, for example, the construction of that building over in VA4. If in its wisdom the government believes that this was a, a bad idea, shouldn't it go ahead and put the project on hold or even quash it? Well, that is the government's prerogative, but the government did not think it's a bad idea to give all the lands in VA4 to one man. That's not a bad idea at all to give away our stadium and want to give all of our beaches, including for the Dolphinarium, the only beach that is left for the people of the North to, to, to recreate. The government doesn't think that it's wrong to take away that beach. 
but the government think it is right to stop the administrative center. So you see, this is where, as a political party and as patriotic people of St. Lucians, we need we we are standing up to what we believe the government is doing to dismember the the society the, the St. Lucian society and the St. Lucianness of our society. So while they stop the administrative building, they can give all of the adjacent lands from Bruceville going all up to Tio Aking and, and and his people. So, so they can stop the administrative center, but all of the people's lands, the, our beaches, they think it is right to do that. So we have to stand up to those things. We, we can't sit down and allow the government to do that. We can't. Let's take a break. Back in a moment with our discussion. Once again, my guest this evening, Mr. Moses Jabatiste of the opposition SLP. Stay with us. Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us. Once again, you're watching Newsmaker Live on DBS Television. We are also on Facebook, our Facebook page, Newsmaker Live on Facebook. And I'm being roasted on Facebook. For example, somebody says that the next time you SLP guys go on Tim show, I'm not watching. <laughs> um, nice program, oh, cutting grass program. Um, somebody also says Kenny is the man and one individual. You, Timothy, get off the man's back. Uh, Musa, for the first time, Labour will lose in VFO North. <laughs> and uh, somebody is also saying, my mother say I must not watch SLP. I will go mad. She cannot afford that, LOL. And uh, more contributions. Tim, don't let me tell you your mother. Whatever. <laughs> and a lot of contributions. Tim, why are you so biased? SLP thought DSH was a bad idea, yet they are continuing with it. Timothy Jolo Laj. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some interesting contributions there on our Facebook page and also dbstvsenlucia.com. In a moment, we'll be taking your calls. That's at 9.30 and uh, we'll be hearing from you. And of course, my guests will be able to interact with our viewers via the television set, Facebook, and also dbstvsenlucia.com. In the run-up to the next general election, what do you envisage happening as far as the leadership of the SLP is concerned? Do you think that the Senusha Labour Party will still have Mr. Philip J. Pierre as its leader? Or should it have Mr. Philip J. Pierre as its leader come the next general election? The leader of the Senusha Labour Party is elected by delegates who attend an annual conference. Honorable Philip GPA has been elected leader of the St. Lucia Labour Party. As parliamentary representative for Viewford North, as chairman of the St. Lucia Labour Party, I have absolute confidence in the leadership of Honorable Philip GPA. I have no doubts that Honorable Philip GPA can take the St. Lucia Labour Party to victory, and I am working very closely in tandem with and encouraging Honorable Philip GPA to do the work that he has to do to take the Senusha Labour Party to victory. I can also tell you, Tim, that the, the leadership of the Senusha Labour Party is solidly behind Honorable Philip J. Pierre. Honorable Philip J. Pierre, who is the current leader of the opposition, um, has served his constituency, has been elected five times in the Castries East constituency. Honorable Philip J. Pierre has served admirably and has served well as a minister of government in several ministries and his work is there to be seen honorable philip j pierre has has integrity good character and i believe honorable philip j pierre will make a good prime minister a prime minister with the with the heart of the people okay um who understands the struggle of 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 the saint lucian people and honorable philip j pierre i believe um is currently mobilizing the country, mobilizing the St. Lucia Labour Party, reorganizing the St. Lucia Labour Party to ensure that we are ready anytime elections are called. So I have confidence in our So basically, GPA. as chairman of the St. Lucia Labour Party, you are batting for Mr. Philip J. Pierre that he will eventually um, contest a leader party into the next poll. As chairman of the St. Lucia Labour Party, we have one leader who was elected by the delegates of the St. Lucia Labour Party and he is Honorable Philip J. Pierre. Um, batting for him, I support him. Mm -hmm. I support him fully. If I was batting for him, then I'll be doing something for him. I support him fully. And I have no doubts about that. And you're looking forward to come the next general election, he being the political leader. God spare. 
I have said before that I support Honorable Philip J.P.A. and I'm working with him, the leaders of the party are working with Honorable Philip J.P.A. to take the Senusha Labour Party to victory. That is our objective. Is there anything, any differentiation between Mr. Philip J.P.A. and the previous leader, Dr. Kenny Anthony? Well, Dr. Kenny Anthony is his own man. Dr. Kenny Anthony so brilliantly as Prime Minister of St. Lucia. Dr. Kenny Anthony will go down in St. Lucia's history, I believe, as the best Prime Minister that we had. Of course, you will have... The best Prime Minister versus Sir John Compton? Even I'll, better than Sir John Compton? I'm not going to compare Dr. Kenny Anthony with any other Prime Minister. I will say again... Because there's no comparison between Dr. Kenny Anthony and Sir John Compton. I will say again, I believe that Dr. Kenny Anthony will go down in St. Lucia's history as the best Prime Minister. I don't want to mention... Uh, on, on what basis? I believe Dr. Kenny Anthony was a transformational leader. Dr. Kenny Anthony um, took St. Lucia, changed St. Lucian society into a, a, a society that, that accommodated the, 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 the modern living. And Dr. Kenny Anthony helped to rebuild a lot of the, the decaying institutions in St. Lucia. Dr. Kenny Anthony and the St. Lucia Labour Party helped to initiate and to, to ground a lot of progressive institutions in St. Lucia and when the time comes he will he will receive his peg. Sadly in St. Lucian society those things happen when you die. But you say but transformational leader in what way because I don't believe that Dr. Kenny Anthony has much to show for the 16-1 mandate that he was given in 1997. I did, he, did he use it to the satisfaction of um, the St. Lucian public and in terms of reforming our constitution? What did he do with the 16-1 mandate that he got in 1997? I believe that on September 9th, a lot of the people who will come out to protest will protest because, for example, Dr. Kenny Anthony and the St. Lucia Labour Party ensured that our children got laptops and the laptop program was moving them into the modern era, information technology, and the United Workers Party government came in. And re the, the, the Honorable Stevenson King, when he was campaigning, he said that children, people don't eat laptops. And I believe that people who will be coming to protest on, on September 9th will protest because the St. Lucia Labour Party, under the leadership of Dr. Anthony, instituted this program, and the United Workers Party removed it. I believe that the St. Lucia Labour Party also instituted better accountability processes in the ministries that, that, that we run. And we are seeing many of those processes are being turned on their heads. So on September 9th, people will come out to protest. I believe that healthcare on the on the Dr. Kenny Anthony and the St. Lucia Labour Party, having negotiated the Owen King EU hospital. And when the United Workers Party came in after 2006. They didn't complete the Owen King EU Hospital either. They didn't complete the Owen King EU Hospital. Let's not forget that. And right now, the United Workers Party wants to privatize the hospital. So I believe on September 9th, people will come out because that is a legacy project of Dr. Anthony and the Labour Party that this United Workers Party want to privatize. And if we, we can talk about the, the, the other area, telecommunications. We can talk about the transformation in building skills, the, the NSDC, which was established by the St. Lucia Labour Party to, to give young people skills, to develop their skills. And we see right now what's happening. The NSDC and CHTTI, um, people are, are privatizing education. We see what's happening with the Safa Luis Community College. And all of those legacy projects of the St. Lucia Labour Party under Dr. Kenny Anthony. I believe these are the things that are upsetting people and realizing that all of those things that the Labour Party set to develop the country, that this United Workers <coughs> Party is turning all of this on its head. So the legacy of Dr. Anthony and the Labour Party and the, the, the attempt by this government to dismantle it and to destroy it is part of the reason why you'll see people come out on September 9th to our protest march and rally. So those are the reasons why you believe that Dr. Kenny Anthony is um, turned out to be a transformational leader. I am not going to discuss what... But you, you made the point, so I I'm asking you to clarify. No, I'm making the point in the context of our protest march on September 9th. I'm telling you, all of the evidence of transformation that Dr. Kenny Anthony... Because I'm putting, and to, I'm putting it made. to you that you really don't believe what you're saying there as far as saying 
that Dr. Kenny Anthony will turn out to be the best prime minister Sinu Sheva has. I don't believe versus, it. Versus um, Sir John Compton. Uh, are you, are you, do you read minds and hearts, Tim? Are you, you saying to me that I don't believe what I said? I think that's, that's, that's tough to say. You should not say that to me. That I don't believe what I said. Don't say that to me. Let's discuss something else. Because the, the, the fact is Sir John Compton laid the foundation. Sir John Compton created the enabling environment so that the likes of Dr. Kenny Anthony can continue where he left off. That's what the majority of the Senusian public, and maybe even most supporters of the Senusian Labour Party will tell you. But to say that um, Sir Dr. Kenny Anthony will go, go down as Senusian's best prime minister, don't you think that's stretching it a little bit? That's my opinion, Tim. We have some calls already. I'm being told by the producer. So look, we have the telephone number. Let's put it online so that we can take your calls. For my guest once again, the MP for V for North is also the Senusha Labour Party's chairman and spokesperson on health, fisheries, agriculture, and food production. Good evening. Newsmaker Live, you're on the air. Hi, good evening, Jim. Hi, good evening to you, sir. Yeah. Good evening, Brother Musa. Hi, good evening, I can. Brother Musa, let me just let me just say this to the to the, to the, to the country. I I think it's a little too late for a lot of our talk show hosts that they have not left their homes way back, let's say 10, 15 years ago, and, and walked the streets in Swazel and in Sufre and in Dokamel and those places. So they have not seen the transformational things that have happened under the reign of Dr. Anthony and the Central Labour Party. So they really cannot talk to it. The most of them sit in castries and do not leave. But Dr. Anthony has changed him and the Labour Party, has changed the lives of people who, who, you know, who only knew how to walk in mud, never knew pipe bone water, never knew electricity, never knew those things. So a lot of these things, are, you know, I, I, I can't even apologize on their behalf. They have not left the, the city and come down to the rest of the country and see what people lived in, you know, 15, 10 years ago, and what we have now. You know, I remember this, this Mary lady, the minister of President Hipney, the President, um, Health Minister coming to view for them and say, you know, your your former man by shame. She wouldn't understand that children had to walk in mud to go to school and leave their homes. So, you know, I apologize sometimes on baby for for not knowing. But again, I think yes, that is the reason why people will come out on the ninth of September to protest. And we you know, is is the ten million dollars that is in Ojo Labs that is in nowhere else. It is the twenty four million dollars that that, that that is granted to Sanders and in dropping the hands of St. Lucian. It's the $43 million, you know, now we have to pay back to the range people, you know. You know, all those little things, you know, that is that is the problem we have in the country right now. And I think most of the talk show hosts and the, and the news reporters need to go out into the community and investigate on their own and then come back. So when Mr. Alan Chastney, you know, comes and gives a press conference, they can say, but so sorry, you lied. And that, that's what I want to hear, because they cannot do it to the Solution Labour Party ministers when they're in office. Because... You know, we have a culture of not lying and telling the truth. But okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Let's take another call. Once again, you're watching Newsmaker Live on DBS Television. Once again, my guest is Mr. Moses Jabatis. Producer, do we have another caller nine? I think we already have another caller nine. Good evening. You on the air? Yes. Hi. Good evening to you, yes. sir. Good night. Good night to all of you on your way. Good night. Good, night. good evening to you. Good yes. What I got to, Mr. Jabatis, I needed to get you. you are, I guess you are familiar with my voice, right? I'm very disappointed in you, and I'll blame you for um, you are for blaming you for causing the Labour Party to lose because you didn't do what you had to do in agriculture. And I'm sure you must have heard my voice during your tenure from 2013, right? During your tenure, right? I spoke up um, during your tenure. Big trees were going at both issue. Big trees. So from 2014, I, I came up with 15, 2014, 14, 15, and 16. I came up with an important crop project. You must have heard me. Even you supported me on that during that time. Right? I spoke to you about our important crop project at Bosi 320 acres of land where Big Trees of Rain could have created, could have tackled about 10 different projects. And that would have brought in $120 million for the country and 1,250 farmers employed. I spoke about that all through your campaign. You didn't do anything. There was a time during your tenure. You was on Calabash TV. I spoke to you about the pineapple project between Magic and St. Lucia, the pineapple project, because I attended a meeting on that. And I spoke to you on that. Right? And St. Lucia could have bought 40 million, and then when fully energized, it could have bought 300 million dollars a year. And you, you know what you said? The project is just there. 
I believe you have failed us miserably in agriculture, and I believe that you should go. Make way for us. Have a good day. Thank you so much. What's he sir? Well, um, thank you for your questions, and it is your opinion, sir, that I feel the people in agriculture. The facts and evidence say a very different thing. When I entered as Minister for Agriculture, agriculture had declined by 3%. When I left as Minister for Agriculture, there was 4% growth to GDP in agriculture. So the, 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 what you're saying um, does, not hold on to, does not hold on to the facts. I agree that I may not have done a project that you suggested, and um, I remember you talking about the pineapple project and, and some other projects, and I agree that possibly those projects did not happen. But the evidence that is there in all, all the sectors, the Agriculture and Fisheries Incentives Act, we passed a law in Parliament for the first time to give um, duty um, tax free um, tax rebates to agriculture and fisheries businesses. There are so many um, um, successes that we have in agriculture. We have a caller line. My apologies. Good evening. Newsmaker Live, you're on the air. Good night. Hi. Uh, Tim, good night. Uh, good uh, evening to you, sir. Musa. Good evening, yes. Uh, Tim, uh, my first question, I have a couple questions for you, but the first one is, do you know um, why Dr. Mandizi resigned? Or do the press know? The media? I'm saying to you, sir. I'm asking a question. But I'm answering you. Mm -hmm. I'm saying to you, sir, that Dr. Keith Mondesi has not spoken about this particular issue, has not informed this solution public. How do you know that? Do you I know whether you have had any private discussion with anybody? But if it's private, he has not spoken to the people of St. on this issue, sir. Okay. It's so simple. You, so you cannot <coughs> tell the, the parliamentary representative or right that he has no information because you don't know whether you have i am saying to you i'm saying to you again okay because mr musa jabatis is not is not there representing the people of senusha he's not cannot speak on behalf of the people of senusha as far as whatever comments that dr mondesi would have made okay so that that's 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 not that's enough okay. that's not any point that we can we can really build okay, on let's move on because i have a few questions um the, you know uh saint lucia is a member of the world health organization, right? Kola, in the interest of time, just move on with your contribution. Okay, do you Please. know that, okay, what the World Health Organization is saying about health when it comes to privatizing healthcare? Do you want to make your point, sir? I'm asking you the question because, Tim, that's important because you are a talk show host. I want People you to, are, no, hold on, hold on. I want you to, I want you to, I want you to make your point. I don't want you to be interviewing me every second of the way. I wanted to make your point. I thought the program was interactive where we could talk to each other. No, because in the interest of time, I cannot have you asking me every little question, such as, do I know if Senusha is a member of the World okay. Health Organization? The world, and those questions. What the world, okay, what the WHO is saying about privatizing healthcare? What is the policy of the WHO on um, privatizing healthcare? Call you wasting my time, you know. Okay, let's move on, Timothy. Because I want you to make your point, build but your I'm point. You the question, you know, and me, so we okay, know I'll have to thank you for that. We continue to take our calls once again. This is Newsmaker Live right here on a DBS television because we cannot be wasting time asking me just little small questions, insignificant questions. Let's move on. Good evening, you're on the air. Yes, good evening. Tim. Hi, good evening to you, caller. And um, good evening to Mr. Jabati. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Tim, I suspect you have a lot of patience tonight. Um, I, I am actually happy, Tim, to see that the former minister can sit across from you without uh, fear of any explosion taking place. <laughs> um, <laughs> explosion. The, Mr. Zabatis, you, you readily accepted that the SLP was rejected at the last poll. Notwithstanding, you claim that campaigning had something to do with it. Now, you also indicated that your party would have had to go back to the drawing board, reorganize, and then to, you know, present a better option to the voters. My question to you is what has changed in the manner in which you governed during the last administration and what you are proposing for the future governance of the country? Or is it a case where you would be going back to what you had because you think it's better than what we have currently. 
Can I answer now? Yes, please. Well, certainly I believe that the St. Lucia Labour Party, and I know that the St. Lucia Labour Party is clearly reorganizing. And when you ask me what has changed, what, what I know is that what is currently happening in St. Lucia with the United Workers Party cannot suffice for good, for good governance. And the St. Lucia Labour Party is, is certainly preparing to do better than what the United Workers Party is doing. I will also tell you that the St. Lucia Labour Party, because of, of its principles, because of, of what we believe in, for example, the St. Lucia Labour Party would never privatize the O.N. King, King EU Hospital. That is different. The St. Lucia Labour Party will never privatize the St. Jude Hospital. The St. Lucia Labour Party would never stop work on the St. Jude Hospital. And the St. Lucia Labour Party would not the issues that we are having with range and the way that, that the Prime Minister is handling the CIP, for example, at the St. Lucia Labour Party clearly would not govern in that way. This, this is not the way we govern. So when, if you ask me um, what is it that, that the St. Lucia Labour Party will present differently, the St. Lucia Labour Party will present good governance. We always believe in good governance, but the St. Lucia Labour Party, when that time comes, will clearly give you its specific when, proposals. No, what, we are, what, we are doing, what we are doing now is, is we are mobilizing and joining St. Lucians who are protesting against what the current government is doing. That is why... I, I know you're doing that. I know you're doing that. Sorry to, to um, come in there. But what, when you say that you are preparing for better uh, government and when the time comes, are you saying that when you have been elected, that is when we will see the changes or what you would be doing differently? Because... You see, that, that is what we hear every five years. We, we hear the promises, and then, you know, most of the time it's more of the same. So, you know, what I'm asking is for you to basically, and if that is the extent of, of the, the of change in this order, say that you propose to do differently, like not privatizing OMT and, and uh, EU and, and those other things that you mentioned, if that is the extent of, of the changes or the difference in which you uh, propose to govern, I don't see what uh, a difference in, in what was there before. Well, so, well, I... Okay, thank you so much yeah, for calling, thank, sir. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I respect the, the, the caller's opinion, but I will continue to say that what is happening in, in St. Lucia today is clearly not the path that the St. Lucia Labour Party would take. That is a clear difference. That is a very clear difference. The St. Lucia Labour Party worked very hard to, to protect our beaches, for example, and what we see happening today. Um, the St. Lucia Labour Party would never give um, T.O. Aking all of our beaches in, in, in Sandy Beach all the way to Bruceville. The St. Lucia Labour Party would never do that. We have a call. Good evening. Thanks for holding on. You're now on the air. Good evening, Tim. Hi, good evening to you, sir. First and foremost, I give you wrong, eh? For what? You cannot compare um, Kenny Anthony to the John Company. The John Company is the father of the nation. That is just concrete, that is solid in our history. We cannot change that. Right now, Kenyon Tony now has to be, well, let me be respectful. The Honorable Dr. Kenyon Tony probably has to be compared to our present Prime Minister. I think that is where we're at right now. Um, where I really wanted to hit tonight was on the St. Jude saga. I call it a saga because I believe, being someone from the South, that for far too long, this hospital has been a political football. And the Labour Party is saying that, you know, they did not stop the project, they did not stop the project. But it is worth not stopping the project when you have a good project going to be a bad project. Whereby we're, we're, we're at a situation where we have a hospital which is twice the size and it is not, there is no functionality in it. It is not complete. You have eroded metal and you know um, the building was basically engulfed with fire parts of the building and it's just been you know putting plaster on on on, on a, a, a a saw that is really deep you know i believe that there should have been greater you know there should have been greater care when it, it came to to the reconstruction of that that hospital especially since it was a hospital in the representative's um, um, district in his backyard, in the, the Prime Minister, the Minister of Finance backyard. You know, I believe St. Lucia really poured out their the, the, the wallet, they poured out their the, 
the, the finances into that hospital and both administration have let us down. I am from Denry and I'm hearing you know that maybe the Boisjoli project may be another St. Jude's and I am really just scared because what St. Jude's is right now, it, 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 if anybody puts anything in the comparison of St. Jude's, you know, you know you, you're in disaster. And I am really saying that the Labour Party does not have the moral authority, Mr. Moza Jabapi, with all respect. You all do not have the moral authority to speak on that matter. So me, you should make LPM speak on that matter for you, because you're part of the Labour Party now. But you all really do not have the moral authority. We came from a, a, a minister every year. We're going to open the hospital. We're going to open the hospital. We're going to open the hospital and give him dates, you know. And up to this moment, it's not open, you know. You all come and say, you know, a hospital, a standard hospital takes eight years. I don't know where you all get that from to open. There are different sizes of hospitals. As if you know, it's a bunch of jackasses that's in St. Lucia. One has brains. No, I mean, we need to, we need to come back to love in St. Lucia. I believe right now that the party, instead of having all these protests, you all need to come sit down with the government and give you all your assistance in trying to, 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 to get these issues and a, a, a mirage of issues. The Prime Minister may not be wanting to sit down, but at least sit down with him and tell him, you know what, this hospital is in our backyard and we need something done and we are here to render your assistance. What it is that we can do? Because it is going nowhere with this work, it is going nowhere with these protests, and we are the ones suffering, especially in the South. I'm sick and tired of this, and you need to get something done. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling. Well, so. um, quickly, caller, thanks for your call. I will <coughs> tell you that um, I do not only have the moral authority, but I have the parliamentary authority. I was elected by the people of Ufort North, and so Dr. Anthony and the others. So we have, we have the authority, caller. To, um, to, to agitate, to protest, and to, to cause our people to, to be represented. This thing, I've heard this thing from the United Workers Party about we don't have the moral authority. The Prime Minister said that we lost our right to, to make decisions and to speak and so on. And you, you hear the tone of the Prime Minister, and that is why we are inviting people who, who are disgruntled with the way the Prime Minister is treating our country and our institutions to the march on September 9th. Now, the, the thing about protests, uh, don't, you know, we must stop all of these protests and so on. I will just say very quickly that if the St. Lucia Teachers Union had stopped protests and so on, unmarried pregnant teachers would, would, would still be losing their jobs. If George Charles and the others had stopped protesting, we would not have an hour for lunch. And if our forefathers had stopped protesting, we would not have the right to vote. And so when people say we should not protest, I want them to, to go back to history. And, and so even the United Workers Party not too long ago um, protested. So we are going to continue to protest. We are going to continue to, to provide an avenue for patriotic solutions who want to protest the, the vindictive and callous actions of this government. And we are led by Honorable Philip J. Pierre, who, who, who is providing not only the moral but parliamentary and, and the leadership to us to guide us to continue to, to, to advocate on behalf of the people of St. Lucia. Good evening. Newsmaker Live, go ahead, please. Hi, good evening to me. And good evening to Comrade Musa Shabatis. Good evening. Good evening um, to you. I just wanted to two things. Um, I don't think that we as a society really appreciate the history when the St. Lucia Labour Party won the election 16-1. We look at an era, if we go back to the history, and Comrade Musa would be quite aware of it, that we had a, a split shift system in our education. <coughs> we had a terrible health care situation in St. Lucia. We had children walking in the mud. You had to get a pair of shoes, two pairs of shoes, one to walk through the mud, and another when you get on the other side. The St. Lucia Labour Party really came in and lifted the faith of St. Lucia putting infrastructure and so on, which was not there before. And you also have this thing of digital and, and cable and wireless and this monopoly which existed and so on. And I can go on and on and on about the revolutionary methods that the St. Lucia Labour Party introduced to St. Lucia. Um, the other thing that I wanted to, to mention, your caller, I, I'm not sure if it's the caller be just before me, when he mentioned the the, the Senusha Labour Party sitting down with the government and so on, and Comrade Musa rightfully said 
that the Prime Minister's own words is that the opposition has lost its right to speak. But further, the Prime Minister does not even acknowledge communication from the opposition. The opposition has called on the Prime Minister, and the leader of the opposition has written to the Prime Minister to speak on issues of national, of national issues like the DSH project. There has not even been an acknowledgement of that letter, and that is over a year ago. So when we speak about, and the, and the caller should, you know, and the leader of the opposition has mentioned this publicly, that the Prime Minister speaks a lot to him on television, and there is no communication as a, an opposition with, 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 with the government. The Prime Minister is arrogant. The Prime Minister is, is wrong. The Prime Minister has a sense of this is entitlement that he can just be do what he wants, and the opposition, as he said, has lost the right to speak. But as the leader of the opposition has said, the opposition will never be silent. The opposition has a right, and the opposition will continue to represent the 37,000 people who voted for it on June 6, 2016. Comrade Musa, um, very well um, um, tonight, and tomorrow we have our Lawas Festival, and I know that you are very, you're a cultural man, so um, this is something that I know that you are look, looking forward to tomorrow. Thank you so much for your indulgence. Good night. Thank you so much. That was the personal assistant to the leader of the opposition, Yazi Hippolyt. Let's continue to take your calls. Once again, you are watching Newsmaker Live right here on DBS Television with my guest. He is Mr. Moses Jabatist. We have another call on line. Hello, good evening. You're on the air. Hello. Hi, good evening to you, sir. Yeah, I just want to say, I just want to say that um, people keep on saying that the Labour Party was there for four years and they did not complete our data. The Labour Party is out of office. And to remind you, Tim, the United Workers Party is in office and they have stopped the project for two years. Let's forget about the Labour Party. What about the other organizations like unions and these kind of people? Why are they not coming up and say, okay, that's what it is and that's what we're supposed to do? And the other thing I wanted to say to um, Mr. Jabati, we have to let people know in the history of St. Lucia, it's in the book that you have been the best Minister of Agriculture. Even St. Lucia, thank you. All right. Is, that's a fact, right? Well, um, Timothy, <laughs> um, I know you laugh, but um, maybe another time we'll come and bring all the books. And that's why when we speak about agriculture, I, I don't speak about emotions, I because speak about facts. I, because I've heard people say that Mr. Peter Josie in his short term, his short tenure, has been so agric agriculture is probably our best minister of agriculture. So we have a lot of best, you know, coming all... <laughs> let's talk about, if I like facts. I like facts. <laughs> I like the fact that, mm. that I, as a minister overseeing agriculture, we move the contribution of agriculture seven percentage points. Fact. I like the fact that we pass an Agricultural Incentives and Fisheries Incentives Act, fact. And I like the fact that um, bananas, I'm hoping that the government can still send bananas to France and Martinique. But anyway, mm -hmm. all of those things, Timothy, the attitude of the government, and the callers spoke about different things about the, the, what the Prime Minister says the, the opposition can't do. And one of the things is how the, the, the government feels that professionals and people who have studied certain areas, architects, doctors, and so on, as long as they express their views, then they become an enemy of the government, and the government feels that they have a right to attack them. And so on September 9th, that is another issue for our protest march and action. People in this country are feeling more and more that when they speak, when they speak, the government feels that they are an enemy of the, of, of, of the state, and therefore the government has a right to, to attack them. And so it's not just Labour Party people. People are feeling in this country, Timothy, that, that they are under attack. St. Lucian institutions are under attack yes, all sir. around the country. Good evening. Newsmaker Live, you're on the air. Hello. Hi, Tim. Good evening. Hi. Good evening to you, sir. Hi. Good evening to your guest. Hello. Good evening. Tim, I'm really, really encouraged by some of the maturity of the statements I've heard coming from you know, some of your callers this evening. 
because it clearly demonstrates that um, the traditional politician, which is really what Mr. Jabatis represents, they, 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 they need the days are numbered. We are at a stage here where we have a government who, which apparently um, is seeking to shift things in the way things have, have, have been done in the past. And rather than giving the government an opportunity to do what it can, we have a bunch of people on the other side who are mindset on doing the same thing all over again. Um, and thus, we'll probably find ourselves in five years' time, if we continue in that direction, even further than behind than we are at the moment. But what we have to realize is that we have been, when we go back to 19, go, go back to 1979 even, when the Labour Party came in with a, with a fairly huge mandate. Three years later, the country was torn apart because of a leadership <coughs> struggle and a secret arrangement that was made to pass the leadership from the person who was duly elected as the leader of the party to a, a certain bunch of people. It disintegrated in three years. Fast forward to 97. The Labour Party could not, with the leadership it had of the day, um, come into government, although they came pretty close on more than one occasion. But they could not do it. What did they do again? They went again and brought in someone, imported somebody, and made the arrangement, I will make you Prime Minister if you come in. And again, it failed because a 61 majority was destroyed 10 years later with nothing meaningful having been achieved and a lot of scandal involved, which we are, up to today, we aren't quite recovered from it. Having done this, they were out of office for another five years, and during those five years, spent as much time as possible trying to bring down out the government of the day, although they themselves contributed to that. We, so we, we're back in a situation now where we have this revolving door. Now, we may not be having the government that we need at the moment, according to them, but the point is, when you look at the history of the Labour Party, and as a, one of your earlier callers stated, um, pointed out, there is no clearly stated intention to change anything, because it's the same persons involved looking to seek office again. When you look at that situation, the Labour Party is not the party anybody should be looking to at this particular point if we decide to change the government. There's nothing that's going to change. Because all we have is the same people talking about the same, um, the, the same policies with absolutely nothing to change. You speak about the current leader being in office for 25 years or thereabouts, and he is the person who is going to take us into the future. When you look at his constituency, when you've represented a, a constituency for 25 years, most of, it in, most of it in government, in the city centre, what has changed in that constituency? I can tell you as somebody who has roamed the streets, the only two things I know that's different in that area. One, the Havana Club is no longer there. Two, Dixie is no longer there. That's the only two things I see in that constituency. There's very little. It's much the same. People leave St. Lucia and come back here 50 years later and walk through that constituency, and they find their way very, very easily. We cannot have somebody like that telling me that you're going to be in charge of St. Lucia or vision for St. Lucia going forward into what we see ahead of us. So what we have is the, 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 the snake oil thing. Fool the people. But I am comforted, as I'm saying, by some of the comments made tonight, it shows clearly people have their head on exactly where we're going. And one last point I want to make. While Alan Chastney is being vilified by all parties concerned, including the Labour Party, we have to understand that the Labour Party created Alan Chastney. Because if the Labour Party had performed at the level ex expected of such a highly qualified team back in 1997, the bar would have been so high that the economy would have been doing so well that Alan Chastney would have been contented to stay as a private citizen making his money in much the same way that Bill Gates and, and Elon Musk and uh, all these guys are in the private sector in the U.S. rather than coming to government. So they have to take responsibility if they want to for creating Alan Chastney and allow him to do what he thinks he can do to um, get St. Lucia back on in, in, in the direction he should be going. Thank, Thank you, sir. Yeah. Well, um, thank you very much, caller. You, you, I, think, I think the caller just did um, exactly what the United Workers' Party continues to do. 
to, 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 to put labels on people like me, people like Musa. You heard what he said, those traditional politicians. Um, as if Honorable Ezekiel Joseph and Honorable Spider Motut and those people are not traditional politicians. And therefore he tries to put Honorable Alan Chastney, Prime Minister, in like he's a different person. So we are traditional politicians, you know? He calls Honorable Philip G. Pierre somebody like that. So you can see the, you can see the deliberate attempt to, to disintegrate, the deliberate attempt to cause people like myself um, not to be in, 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 in the circle of, of who he described the Prime Minister to be. He has forgotten that that's the same Prime Minister was Minister, minister for Tourism, and he has forgotten that, that we are all St. Lucians, and um, when he describes Honorable Philip J. Pierre, our esteemed leader, as people like that, that, you know, these are the very things that St. Lucians generally are, are up in arms against. These are the things because the Prime Minister, for example, in the same vein, refers to people as jackasses, in the same vein, barking dogs. So you see the same United Workers' Party trend that, that people like Musa are, uh, you know, traditional people, they don't belong. But I can tell you, Timothy, it is those same sentiments that, that are causing people all around St. Lucia, doctors, the professionals, the customs, and all around St. Lucia, farmers who have not shipped bananas to France, and, and people in the hospitals, the nurses who might lose their jobs, and all of those people in St. Lucia. It is those kinds of comments that are making St. Lucians feel that they don't belong anymore. Because you have a group of people who have now dis they are dismembering St. Lucia slowly to privatize everything in St. Lucia so that it no longer belongs to us St. Lucians. The people the caller call that. So we are going to demonstrate to, to, to that kind of thinking that St. Lucians are not that. Honorable Philip J. Pierre, our esteemed leader, is not that. He is a, 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 a an individual who's a, a trained individual, a business person, grew up in castries and has made his contribution to the country. And the Prime Minister um, and his people, those people who think in that way, are causing ordinary St. Lucians, business people in St. Lucia, to feel that, that St. Lucia no longer belongs to us. We can't go to our beaches. The, the Owen King EU is too good for us and therefore it is for tourists. And so they try to degrade us. But I can tell you that the St. Lucia Labour Party and all patriotic St. Lucians will come together on September 9th to protest those kinds of attitudes. It's an attitude in the United Workers' Party that's building. It's an attitude that we, St. Lucians, are not, we, we don't belong to the beautiful beaches. It has to be privatized for people to come in and take it over. And, and therefore, you have to get rid of those people like that. And so we are going to continue to mobilize and to organize our people so that we cause our people not to fall into the trap of, of a self-fulfilling prophecy that makes St. Lucians believe that we don't belong. And that is why we are mobilizing for September 9th, the, the attitude of the Prime Minister, the attitude of the government towards our St. Lucianness and, and towards privatizing all of our institutions. To, to people who are their friends. We are protesting against those things and we will continue to work hard at it. Thank you so much, sir, for being my guest Thanks on this much. evening's Newsmaker Live. And to you, thank you so much for watching the broadcast and contributing via your calls. If it's Wednesday, it's Newsmaker Live. Time now for the clip that peaked. Yes, my name is Timothy Folio saying good night and see you next time.